Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. It's story time again. So excited, huh? Yes, Baba. I really want to hear the story of Prophet Ishaq today. Hmm. Not much is known about Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam. So I will tell you all the known facts about this Prophet. And I will also tell you the story of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, who was his son. Huh? Are you going to tell me the story of two prophets today? <laughs> all right, all right. Now sit down and listen carefully. Bismillah. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam grew old and so did his wife Sara. One day when he was sitting outside his house, he saw three men coming towards his house. The three men were actually angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet welcomed them inside to have food. The strangers went in and sat down for food. Prophet served them a roasted calf. But the strangers did not touch the food at all. The Prophet started to fear. Then the angels comforted the Prophet and asked him not to fear at all. They told him that they were actually the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They informed him that they came to his house to deliver a good news. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give them a son and that he should name him Ishaq. They also told him that his son would be a prophet. Sara could not believe her ears. How could that be true? She wondered. I am so old. Then the angel said that all things are possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After a few months, Sara got pregnant and gave birth to a child. The prophet named him Ishaq, as the angels told him. Ishaq grew up as an obedient boy. He worked hard, and like the angels foretold, he too became a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam was very old by the time Ishaq grew up. As he felt that his life was nearing its end, he wished to see his son get married. But he did not want Ishaq to marry one of the Canaanites, as they were all disbelievers. One day, he sent one of his trustworthy servants to Haran to choose a bride of Ishaq. The servant obeyed his master and traveled for many days to reach Haran. Once he reached Haran, the servant selected Rebekah, the daughter of Ibn Nahur, who was a brother of Prophet Ibrahim As his father wished, Ishaq married Rebecca. Rebecca didn't give birth to a child for a long time. Ishaq السلام, kept praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child. And after many years, she gave birth to twins. Ishaq named them Esau and Yaqub. Esau grew up to be a strong man and he was a good hunter. But Yaqub was more intelligent and he was his father's favorite. There were frequent fights between the brothers as Esau disliked the fact that his father favored Yaqub more than him. Esau became more and more jealous as they grew. Ishaq السلام, grew old and he could not see clearly. One day, he asked Esau to go hunting and bring him some cooked meat. Rebecca, his wife, overheard the conversation and she ran to her son Yaqub. Esau agreed and went hunting for the meat. Slaughter two goats of your best flock, she said to him, and cook them as you know your father will like. Go and do this before your brother returns. Yaqub did as his mother had ordered. Rebecca then asked him to put on his brother's clothes 
and then she covered his hands and neck with goat skin. This was to make his skin feel like a sow who was very hairy. Then Yaqub stepped into his father's room. Who are you? asked Ishaq alayhi salam. I am your son, replied Yaqub in a deep voice. His father then started eating the food. Once he finished his food, he blessed Yaqub to be the better brother and to be the leader of his people. Once he got the blessings, he left the room. Esau returned with the meat after some time, and he entered his father's room. What is this, my son? The prophet asked when he heard Esau's footsteps. I've brought you the meat you like. Ishaq was now confused. Didn't you bring me the food an hour ago? He asked him. I also gave you my blessings. No, I swear I did not, Esau said. He then knew that he had been cheated by Yaqub. He felt so angry that he wanted to kill Yaqub right away. Rebecca saw what had happened. So she went to Yaqub and ordered him to go to her brother Laban in the land of Haran. She asked him to stay there until his brother was not angry at him anymore. Yaqub left his family and started his journey towards Haran. He traveled for many days in the desert. One evening, he got very tired of walking and decided to get some rest. He took a stone and put it under his head and slept. That was when he had an amazing dream. In his dream, he saw a ladder from heaven to earth. He saw that the angels were coming down and going up the ladder. It was then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Yaqub and this piece of land for his future generations. When he woke up, he exploded with joy. He took a vow that if he returned to his family safely, he would build a mosque here for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also vowed to give one-tenth of his property to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He poured oil on that stone so that he would be able to recognize this place later. This place is today known by the name of Jerusalem. The next morning, Yaqub set out for Haran. After many days of traveling, he finally reached Haran. Yaqub السلام, then met his maternal uncle Laban. His uncle was very happy to see him and invited him to his house. Laban had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. The Prophet started working hard for Laban. During his stay, he fell in love with his uncle's younger daughter, Rachel. After a few months, he asked Laban to marry Rachel. Work for me for seven years, he said, and I will let you marry my daughter. The Prophet agreed to his terms. Yaqub worked hard and Laban prospered. After the end of the seventh year, his uncle prepared a feast and gathered people for the wedding. But his uncle tricked him and he got his elder daughter Leah married to Yaqub. Leah was weak-sighted and ugly. Yaqub did not know about this and he discovered the truth only in the morning. When he realized that he had been tricked, he went to his uncle. You deceived me, he said to Laban. I was engaged to Rachel, and you married me to Leah? His uncle said, It is not our tradition to marry the younger daughter before the elder one. However, he added, If you love Rachel, Work for another seven years and I will let you marry her. Yaqub worked hard for another seven years and then married Rachel. It was acceptable in their time as described in Torah for a man to marry two sisters. Laban gave a female slave to each daughter. Leah's slave was called Zilpah. 
and Rachel's slave was called Bilha. What happened then? I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow. Oh no, please tell me now, Baba. Please, please. Come on, it's time for you to go to sleep. I will ask you a few questions now and I'll tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. All right, Baba. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Why did the three angels come to the house of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? They came to deliver the news that they were going to have a son. Masha Allah, that's the correct answer. What was the name of the wife of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam? I know that. It was Rebecca. That's right again. What were the names of Prophet Ishaq's sons? It was Esau and and Yaqub. That's right again. Now tell me why Esau hated Yaqub. Hmm. Esau hated him because he was his father's favorite son. And also that God chose him as the next prophet. That's correct. What was the name of Yaqub's uncle in Haran? Hmm, wasn't it Laban? That's correct again. How long did Yaqub work for Laban? First he worked for seven years and then he worked for another seven years. It's fourteen. The Prophet worked for fourteen years for Laban. What were the names of the daughters of Laban? They were Leah and Rachel. Masha Allah, you gave all the right answers. That's all for today. I will tell you the story of another prophet tomorrow.